Nathaniel here and welcome again to a bit of data science and scikit-learn where we learn just a little bit of data science and a lot of scikit-learn. Um, today we're going to be going over the massive category of supervised uh, learning. Um, this is probably the majority of data science can be sort of classified under the field of uh, supervised learning entirety of machine learning, deep learning. Um, a lot of it can all be fit under uh, supervised learning. Um, generally, people think there's you know three distinctions. You have that supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. I'm not going to be doing any reinforcement learning here. Um, so to crush your hopes immediately, we are just going to be showing you how a supervised learning estimator in scikit-learn works. Um, so we're not going to be going over every single method. I think there are uh, hundreds of methods in scikit-learn. Um, I will point you to a couple of them as we uh, go through this sort of tutorial. Uh, that being said, there will be more than I will be able to uh, shake a stick at. So to begin, um, we will we will load our data set. Oh, let me let me don't don't look at any of the stuff below. Um, so go ahead and load our data set. If you watched before. Uh, you will know that scikit-learn comes with a lot of data sets. We are using the toy data set, the load Boston data set, where we're trying to predict a house's value based on um, some other features of that house, the crime rate, the uh, number of square feet, and stuff like that. Um, so if we're trying to predict uh, a real number, uh, given some factors, uh, this type of problem is called regression. So our prediction will be a real number. Um, and I, I, I can just show you this. Um, so uh, we, we can go ahead and uh, print x uh, 0 to first x. So we're using all of these numbers, these factors. This is like the crime rate, and this is the um, number of people who have like LSATs or something like that. We're trying to predict uh, a real number that is 24. It could be anything. Um, in this case, it can't actually be anything. It's going to be a positive number, so you might consider making a log transform uh, in order to make it um, actually be anything. Um, then, then again, uh, if you want to make it a log transform, I would probably uh, you're, you're not going to you're seeing. Anyways, this is not the point of this. Um, so uh, we're trying to predict a real number. Um, there's a ton of tools that Scikit-Learn has. Uh, some of the most common, some of the easiest, are linear models. Um, in linear models, you've got three super famous ones. Um, you've got the classic linear uh, or ordinary least squares. Uh, you've got lasso, and then you've got ridge regression. And if you combine lasso and ridge over ridge regression, you get something called elastic net. So let's check out what a regressor looks like. So we have our data. Uh, we want to use our data to predict. Um, and what scikit-learn provides to us is an estimator. It's a type regressor. Um, which we can use to predict. Let's check it out. So you'll notice that this is a class, uh, so it's a Python class. It has a lot of parameters. We have an alpha, an L1, fit intercept, all this stuff that's a little confusing. And a nice description. So it's a linear regression combined with L1 and L2 priors as regularization. Um, you can Google this uh, in order to figure out a little bit more. We're not going to be going into the algorithms. We're going to be going um, into the estimators. Um, you can look at what all the parameters are down here. So we have an alpha parameter, an L1 ratio, a fit intercept, a normalized, and descriptions all here. Um, so you get to see like a lot about what these things do. Uh, one of my first suggestions is that if you are, are going to use one of these estimators, please look at the, the function signature. Please check out what's inside, how it's used generally speaking, read the docs because um, that will help you a lot. <clears throat> okay, so we want to make an elastic net. This will help us predict. Um, so we go ahead and we say linear model to elastic net. We give it some parameters. We give it an alpha of 0.1, L1 ratio of 0.9, and we get our model back. So this model can't do anything yet, but now our model has a couple of methods attached to it. One of these methods happens to be fit. So the model is stuck right now. It's sort of like, oh, it's initialized. All of its hyperparameters, these are these things right up here, have been initialized, but doesn't know what the data is. 
And remember the first thing that we need to do if we're trying to learn machine or we're trying to do machine learning is we get data. First we get data, then we get the algorithm, and then we pull or then we uh, apply a learning method uh, on that data uh, given our algorithm. So let's do that. The the learning method that we apply is fit. <laughs> there's there's <clears throat> if you look under the hood there is a learning method, but fit will fit will apply the learning method. So we initialize our model, we fit our model. Okay, our model's been fit. You'll see some print up here. And then we can look at lots of things attached to our model. So some things attached to models could be coefficients. So you've got coefficients. So these are, in some sense, how important, uh, how relative each of the uh, predictors was. Um, we've got an intercept. This is kind of like the average house price. So, uh, so we've got 26 of the average house price. I think these are in thousands. And this was a long time ago. Boston's much more expensive now. And then we get two new methods that are attached to it. So we've got fit, we've got predict, and we've got score. So what predict does is it takes a new value, something you haven't seen before, and it tries to predict it. So in this case, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use an old value. So I already fit on this x value itself. I already fit on the entire matrix of x values. So I'm just going to feed it to it again. I'll predict. So it seems like the first x value is... Uh, or at least our model believes should be around 30. Um, so we, we can actually see what the first x value should be by looking at y0. It's 24. So we're a little bit off. And it's like, mm, it's not so good. Um, and then we also have the score method. Um, and so what the score method does is it says, let's, let's take some uh, data set, let's take the labels on that data set, and let's sort of, um, let's see how well our model does. And so we get, we get a point uh, seven two. What does that mean? Uh, so scores always are positive. So the more uh, positive, the better. Um, if you actually look into what the m dot score does with a question mark, you can see what it actually measures. In this case, it measures r squared. Um, so um, if you're interested in what r squared is, you can definitely check out the uh, stats models tutorial where we go over this a lot. Okay. That's an estimator. That's a vanilla estimator. So we take our estimator, we initialize it with hyperparameters, we fit, and then we can score or predict. It's pretty simple. Um, I wanted to show you another cool type of estimator, and these are the CV estimators. So these are the cross-validated estimators. So let's check out under the hood what it does. So elastic net model with iterative filtering along the regularization path. So best model is selected by cross-validation. Um, so if you guys don't know what cross-validation is, I should definitely do a sort of video tutorial on it, but just as, as a brief word, um, one of the problems with machine learning is that you can't use the data that you learned on in order to tell you how good a model is. Um, it's kind of like cheating. It would be kind of like you studying the answer key for a test and then getting tested on that test. You're probably going to do really well because you already have the answer key. So instead, the teacher gives you lots of previous tests that have something to do with, but not all to do with the actual test you're gonna take. You study the previous tests, you go into class, and then you take the actual test. And that determines actually how well you, you uh, know the knowledge, how well you've generalized. Um, so, uh, so in this case, cross-validation is a way to do that. So cross-validation lets us train uh, on some data and evaluate it, validate our model on, on other data. Um, it does it all behind the hood. So this is really nice. Um, the thing about this um, is that I can specify a ton of L1 ratios, a ton of alphas, lots of hyperparameters for it to go through. Um, so I'll specify all these hyperparameters and I'll say like, hey, go through all of these hyperparameters and tell me which is the best model. And so this is very common. Uh, we're going to be dealing with this a lot. We're, we're going to specifically do a section in cross-validation in scikit-learn. So hold your horses. Um, and so in this case, we're going to fit a lot of stuff. And, and I'll sort of show you fit. Fit all the stuff, and then I'll show you the alphas. Um, so this is all of the alphas we fit. We fit like, I don't know, how many? 20 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we fit like 1,400 models. Like, and it's so fast, right? Um, we can check out the mean squared error of each of these models. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, 
And so you notice for the first model, this was with, uh, this is 52, so this is with an alpha of uh, 7.24 to the, to the 10 times 10 to the third with an L1 ratio of 0.1. Um, we got 52, mean squared error. No, oh, so not bad. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and so you can check out all the mean squared uh, errors. You can check out the best alpha, right? And so the best alpha is uh, 1.44. Uh, so that's that's the best alpha. Uh, we, we can even check out what the, um, uh, the best uh, L1 ratio is. Best one L1 ratio is 0.5, which is kind of surprising. It's like, yeah, right in the middle. Um, and what you can do with this cross-validated object, this cross-validated estimator, this, this we estimated you know, 1,400 algorithms, and we selected the best algorithm out of all of them, is you can then use that best algorithm to predict, right? Um, and you can use it to score. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's go down to classification. So we've, we've covered you know, two-thirds of the material that I want to go through. We saw what an estimator is, what a base estimator is. Um, we saw it applied to regression. We saw uh, how to use cross-validation to, to pick from like a lot of estimators, you know, potentially thousands of estimators. Now we're gonna see what classification is. So we're gonna load another data set. Um, so this is the IRIS data set. Um, and so, you know, again, if you want to know what the IRIS data set is, right? We can load the iris data set. We cannot return x, y. Um, and then we can do a, uh, well, let's, let's get this uh, data set. Um, and then we can do data set dot desk. <clears throat> and you want to print this, otherwise it looks really ugly. And then you can read all about this. You can read all about the iris data set. In the iris data set, uh, we have flowers. We have some measurements of these flowers and we're trying to predict which species of flower are we looking at? Um, this is distinctly different from predicting a real number. There's only three options. We've got flower one, flower two, and flower three. Um, so we've got a Setosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. Uh, these are three options. So it's just kind of like, how, how do you do that? Um, in this case, this is a classification problem. This is the second type of supervised learning that we're gonna really thoroughly dive into. Um, so we've got regression. This is we're looking for real numbers, and we've got classification looking for specific classes. Um, one of the um, most common classification methods is called logistic regression, uh, CV, uh, means that it's cross-validated. So we're gonna be looking over lots of logistic regressions to find the best. You can check out all the hyperparameters here. C's, we've got fit intercept, we've got class weights, so you can test them all. Um, <clears throat> again, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna go over these specifically, but um, but it's all there for you to enjoy and read. Um, we can go ahead and do our linear model logistic regression. We'll, we'll test 10 uh, different C values, which is 10 different regularization values. Um, we'll use two jobs. This means we're going to be using two cores on your computer. So we parallelize this super easy. You can do this with any CV algorithm. Um, and then we go ahead and fit. Uh, so we fit. Took a little bit of time. We, we were training a lot of uh, algorithms. Um, check out the coefficients. These are the best coefficients uh, that we actually uh, ran into. And then we can go ahead and predict. So we predict that the first x value is zero. We're like, whoa, that looks wrong. Well, it, it turns out that uh, this first x value um, being zero means it's a, it's a Satosa or whatever. You, you, can actually, you can actually check this out. Um, so we look at y, we look at the zero, um, and zero. So we, we predict correctly. That's awesome. Um, the reason why it is a zero is that you just, it's a little bit easier to feed in numbers to represent classes rather than to feed in, um, um strings, you know, but not, not super big deal. Um, we can then predict the probability. This is a new thing that we can do for classification. We can predict the probability for each thing. So we've got 0.9, very, very, very small, and 0.08 uh, are the probabilities. We can predict the log probability is the other thing. And we can also do a score. Um, so 0.96, and this score is gonna be different. Uh, this is the accuracy, and you, again, 
Again, you can just easily check out what these things are by just putting a question mark after it. So multi-label classification, this is subset accuracy, so which is a harsh metric. Um, so awesome. Um, I hope this is super useful. This, this goes over exactly how you use estimators in scikit-learn. Uh, you've got predict, or you've got fit, you've got predict, you've got score, and you also have predict probability for classification. Um, in addition to that, you can also have CV estimators, cross-validated estimators, that should do a really awesome job of searching over a ton of different algorithms, a ton of different hyperparameters, in order to find the best. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I hope you guys learned a lot, and I hope you guys you know, continue to tune in, because we're going to be doing uh, ensembles next which should be really awesome. Uh, these are like the heavy hitters in machine learning algorithms. Thanks.